Have you ever tried to predict the next big innovation in technology? It's really hard. In fact, I'd say it's practically impossible for most people. However, there is a smarter way of making predictions if you look in the right direction. Here's what I mean. If you look at the history of most innovations, there's a common pattern, which is the fact that most of these innovations took a few years before they were recognized and adopted. So what I'm suggesting is that instead of looking forward and making predictions, you might have better luck by looking back at recent innovations that haven't gained traction yet. Okay, so what does this have to do with the title of this video? Well, I believe that conflict-free replicated data types, or CRDTs, are a recent innovation that might just fundamentally change how we solve many programming challenges. In fact, I think CRDTs will make things that were practically impossible to do possible. All right, some of you are probably a bit skeptical and thinking, really? A new data type is a big innovation? Okay, I hear you, but try and keep an open mind, because what I'm about to show you, well, I think it's a potential game changer, but you're going to have to think outside the box just a little bit, but if you stay with me, I think you'll get a sense of how powerful CRDTs can be. I mean, I think you'll have a light bulb moment. Now, before I start talking about CRDTs, I want to share a simple example problem that can be solved with CRDTs. So here's a distribution center with an automated conveyor system, and we need to write the software for these pusher assemblies that can redirect packages from one conveyor to another in a collaborative way. So how do these pushers work? Well, it's a computing device, or node, with the sensor here that can identify products, then this node will reference a delivery document for this trailer and make a quick routing decision. Okay, so how do these nodes access this delivery document information? Odds are it's probably in a cloud-based system, so these nodes could request this information from the cloud every few seconds, 24 hours a day, but do you see any problems with this? Well, what if this internet connection flakes out occasionally? If it does, then these nodes can't decide where to route the product, so everything comes to a halt. Or what if the internet connection works, but it's degraded? Well, then these nodes would have to wait longer to make decisions, so the throughput of the entire DC goes down, labor costs go up, Shipments are late and customers are mad. But even if this internet connection is perfect and never fails, there are certain challenges that just can't be solved because of physics. What I mean is, this DC is likely one of many, and it could be thousands of miles from its cloud-based servers, so there's some amount of inherent latency because we're limited by the speed of light. Okay, so is there a better solution? Well, ideally, we need to get this data closer to where it's needed so these nodes can make fast decisions, and this is where CRDTs come into play. All right, so what exactly are CRDTs? Well, they're a collection of data types that allow you to build decentralized distributed applications. Okay, but what does this mean? Well, for example, you could write an application that runs locally on each of these nodes, and each node would have their own copy of this delivery document, but here's the interesting part. These independent applications can work in a collaborative way to load their common trailer. Okay, let's think through the logic needed at these nodes to make this work, but to start, we won't use CRDTs, we'll just use primitive types, and we'll see how far we can go. So the first step in this process is the creation of the delivery document in the cloud. Next, an empty trailer pulls into shipping dock 1, then this delivery document is assigned to dock 1, then all three of these nodes create a replica of the cloud-based document. Let me ask you a question. What's the source of truth for the delivery document you see here, 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 and here? Well, that was kind of a trick question, because there is no single source of truth. Remember, we're trying to build a decentralized distributed application, which means all four of these documents can be updated locally, and these updates can be replicated to all four of these nodes, such that all four documents converge to the same value. Okay, so our simple example is starting to seem more complicated, right? I mean, do you even think it's possible to write something like this and have it work correctly? Well, let's see. Okay, let's think about how this pusher assembly works. So a package arrives at the sensor, it's identified as product A, and based on this local information, the node decides to redirect the package and increment the picked quantity from 0 to 1. For discussion's sake, we'll say this picked field is modeled as an integer. Now if you compare this replica with these replicas, we see a divergence here. So to make things consistent, we need to replicate this updated value to the other nodes. So the 1 gets sent to these nodes, and it replaces the zeros, and everything seems okay so far. Next, we see two packages, here and here, arrive at these two sensors at the same moment. Then they're identified as product A, so they're both redirected, and the picked quantities are incremented. Then this update is replicated to the other nodes, and the 1 is updated to 2. 
then this update is replicated, and the 2 is replaced by 2? Hmm. Okay, that's not right. I mean, we know the picked value should be 3, right? Alright, from this simple example, we see that creating decentralized distributed applications is challenging, but with the recent innovations of CRDTs, we can solve this challenge by replacing this picked field's integer type with a CRDT counter type. Then instead of incrementing the field like this, we'd increment it like this, and to the application developer, this is all you need to know to fix the problem we just saw, but if you're new to CRDTs, I bet you're curious how this counter data type works, so let's dig a bit deeper. Now, obviously a counter represents a number, but that doesn't mean we have to model it as a primitive such as an integer. Here's what I mean. What if our counter's data model looked like this? It has a unique replica ID for each replica, and a map data type. Then, when increment is called the very first time, we just add a key value pair to the map, where the key is the unique ID, and the value is whatever it was incremented to. Then to replicate the counter, we could just send this map to the other replicas. Okay, let's circle back to the problematic scenario we saw a moment ago. So with our new data model, when this node increments the picked quantity, it doesn't update this value, instead it inserts a new key value pair using its own unique ID, and similarly, when this node concurrently increments its picked quantity, it inserts its own key value pair. Now to replicate these two updates, should we send the entire map to the other nodes? Well, you could, but it would be more efficient if you just sent what changed, which is just this key value pair. Then you can merge this smaller fragment of data into the maps at the other replicas, and you'd replicate this fragment as well, and now each replica has merged the concurrent updates without conflict, and if you want to know the current count, you just sum these numbers together, and you get the same results on every replica. Okay, now imagine one of the packages routed to dock1 is damaged, so we need to decrement the picked quantity somehow. So the question is, how do you decrement our counter? Well, there are a few important rules to CRDTs that you need to understand and honor in order for them to work properly. So for example, CRDTs must be monotonic, meaning these values here can get bigger, or they can stay the same, but you can't let them get smaller. Okay, so why is this? Well, without going into too much detail, there are data synchronization algorithms that must be implemented to ensure consistency of the replicas, which can lead to a node that receives two updates that seem to conflict. So for example, this update is merged first, followed by this update, but look at this value here. It's less than the current value, and if we merged it, we'd have inconsistent replicas, so instead, we just merge the maximum of these two values. Okay, so obviously decrementing one of these values and trying to replicate it wouldn't work, so how do we decrement the counter? Well, what if instead of having just one map in the counter's data model, we have two maps? One for increments and one for decrements, then to get the current count value, we just add these numbers and subtract these numbers. Alright, the counter CRDT I just introduced is just one of many different CRDTs you'd need in a typical application, but you've seen enough here to hopefully give you a sense of how they work. I mean, CRDTs are a powerful tool that will allow you to solve problems in ways that just weren't possible before. Now, there are trade-offs when using CRDTs instead of primitives. For example, the counter CRDTs trade-off is that it uses more memory than an integer would, because the counter value is derived from this metadata here, and keep in mind, some CRDTs accumulate more metadata than others, however, recent research has shown ways to optimize the storage of metadata to the point where CRDTs are now viable for many scenarios. Here at Mycelio, we believe that CRDTs are a big innovation that will shape the way many problems are solved, and we're building the tooling to help you take advantage of CRDTs and allow you to create decentralized, distributed applications. If you're interested in learning more about what we're doing, you can join our mailing list at mycelio.com.